The winner of Usyk Fury has to fight Hergovic next. No exceptions. Pro boxing fans here in Sheffield, it is rain and we've just seen an explosive rain. Uh, before I start up and talk about the rain, we had Billy Joe Saunders just behind us yeah. and you know normally there's a massive queue for Yeti and I saw everyone sort of veering away and just going towards Billy. Good. Shows he's, uh, he's still got a big attraction. Well, I think that, that when you talk about the top boxing names and personalities over the last decade, Billy Joe Saunders is right up there. Good, bad, ugly and he's a tremendous fighter so just seeing the interest in his return gives me a lot of confidence to know that people are interested in Billy Joe Saunders and so they should be, he's a great fighter so I think that I've seen a change in him you know, I think he wants to knuckle down and make the most of his last few years in the sport and I'm excited to be a part of that and obviously the plan is to try and get out in December um, and then come down to 68 for, the, for a bigger fight or a, a really big fight in the spring and I think, you know, I, I still think he's one of the, the best fighters in the world December, are we looking at possibly the, the Eubank card? Are we looking at maybe December 2nd? Anything. I don't mind where it is. Look, the first fight is going to be a run out, right? And he, it's fine. You've been out for, what, two and a half years? You're okay to have a run out. And you've come down from on whatever he was, 15, 16 stone, I don't know. So we need that. Um, no pressure. Go out. But use it as a springboard to get yourself in great shape for the, the bigger fight at 168. So that's what we're looking to do. And, um, you know, we're, we're excited to see him back. Have you watched his uh, podcast with Simon Jordan yet? Bits of it. I actually put it on last night, travelling home and sort of flick through it. What bit are you referring to? Just interesting. Just, yeah, like you said, like, there's a lot of maturity and stuff. And he's actually admitted to it in that, that he's done things. That that Billy was a law unto himself. Do you know what I mean? So, like, as a promotional company, it was very difficult to keep a handle on him. Sometimes you'd... Social media is like a disaster. For, for people sometimes people like Billy Joe who are just mucking around they're saying this they're saying this, and, it's, and they're like everything's being filmed you've got to just put that shit down and you just got to get on with your life and just be a man be a role model and I, I think I think he said on that or another interview like my kids are seeing that they, they're on social media now and they've seen videos that I've done stuff, and it's, he said it's embarrassing and it is like at some point you reach a point in your life where you just grow up and I think he's there now. And, you know, I think when you look at the Canelo fight in um, Dallas Cowboys, he was the first guy, or and maybe the only guy, that I watched fight Canelo who actually didn't have any respect for him, right? And actually fought in a way that he wasn't overawed by the occasion. I remember seeing him walk out, you know, great song um, Spartan Soldier right like, and I thought to myself fuck me Billy's up for this you know and he wasn't overawed at all now listen he got his cheekbone smashed and Canelo deserved the win but it was a good fight do you know what I mean you could see like Billy Joe's a smart guy and I said to him the other day as well like you're an asset to boxing you're an asset you can be an asset to kids in a community what's up Dalt you alright mate see you in a bit but you can also be an asset in a commentary booth, in the analysis, in gyms, you know what I mean? So don't waste it. And tomorrow night we're bringing him onto the presentation team, the commentary team. Because I think we've actually unearthed a gem in Sonny Edwards on a commentary. And everybody who watching saying this guy, I mean, he does talk a lot. But I think Billy Joe is the same, like, they're, they're just smart, smart fighters. Their boxing IQ is very high. And like... I'm excited to see Billy behind the mic tomorrow night. I think he can, like, you know, you have to understand as well, like, if you've been in boxing your whole life, when you are not in boxing, it's very uncomfortable for some people. Like, you need it. You see people leave the sport and they struggle to replicate anything like that in life, you know? I think it's good for Billy as a person to be in boxing, whether it's here today, whether it's behind the mic, whether it's boxing whether it's in a, a club, in a community, doing stuff, you know? It's your life. It's, it's what makes you, it's what you have a passion for. And if you take that away, what else have you got a passion for? One of the problems with boxing is everybody's so devoted to the sport, you, me, Billy, that your life is like, 
90% boxing. <laughs> what else? Like, I don't know. People always say to me, oh, what do you do to unwind? I'm like, probably watch the boxing. Do you know what I mean? Or like, next week, I'm probably going to fucking get a KSI. Because I don't, know, I don't know what else to do. I don't really ever. I don't go out. I don't go to clubs. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't watch the premiership. I don't, like, I don't know. Because you're just like boxing, 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 boxing. And that's the same with Billy. So remove that. What else are you going to do? He's probably just walking around at home going, I literally don't know what to do. So get himself back in the game. Um, let's talk a little bit about some news that broke out as well in the heavyweight division. Uh, Mike Compton obviously reporting that the IBF are going to order the men's three, uh, even if the undisputed rematch takes place. Obviously, I, I've seen you talk about this now. Um, situation with that is obviously, I think Frank Warren said this, a mind your own business in one of the interviews. But the situation is that, is that the case that the rematch happens, but the yeah, IBF are still calling for it? We feel that under the rules, Hergovic should be fighting Usyk next, and that should have already been called. That's an ongoing argument. What the IBF have come back and said, which you know is nice, but we feel still not following actual procedure, is the winner of Usyk Fury has to fight Hergovic next. No exceptions, or the fight or the belt will become vacant. We are hearing, of course, that Usyk against Fury is a two-fight deal, so the winner of that fight will be stripped of the IBF belt. So therefore, Hergovic will fight next in line hopefully for the world championship but we'll have to see um, a lot of people are saying that listen you're spoiling the party that's the, the two five fight deal if, if it goes well first time around second time around people matter. once you've done undisputed it's totally irrelevant okay. every look if you if you look at the history of undisputed nearly every time there's an un undisputed fight a belt fragments you can't have it every way there's an argument the undisputed shouldn't even be happening now and Hergovic should be getting his shot. But if, if it happens, then no problem. But you can't make a guy wait, what, two years like for, for his due shot. So, no, if, you know, we see it with Terence Crawford, we see it with Josh Taylor, we see it with Charlo. You, that's just what happens in, in a sport. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what unfolds. Um, obviously, with this deal now saying it's been signed, uh, I watched True Jordy and he's saying, listen, it's time for Eddie, AJ Wilder to make it happen now because it's got to encourage you, it's got to push you to now make the big fights with AJ. Yeah, of course. It always does. Not just this fight, but I think it makes the fighters want it more. I think it makes the promoters want it more. I think it wants networks to, to want it more. Um, so, yeah, you know, we want to make that fight. So, a picture of Oscar De La Hoya and Bob Arum. Um, First of all, where was your invite? And secondly, I know he wants to work with all promoters. He has sort of talked about you in a, in a negative light, to say the least, recently, but would you be willing to uh, pick up the phone to Oscar? I mean, he wants to work with me, but he wants to slag me off non-stop at the same time. So at the end of the day, I don't really care for all that. I want to make big fights. You know, we're making a lot of big fights at the moment. Um, I think the fight to make is Ryan Garcia against the winner of Haney Progre, both everybody with the zone. Um, but whatever ideas they've got, you know, we're trying to make Mungir against John Ryder. That's a Golden Boy matchroom fight. If Mungir was to win that fight, we'd like to make Mungir against Belanga. That's another fight we can make. Um, but everybody's got to be on board, not just the promoters, but the fighters, the agents, the lawyers, the advisors, the managers. So we'll see. Um, we see that the UFC and the WWE have gone into a merger and they've formed this company called CKO. We know that UFC have sort of Dana White sort of flirted with coming into boxing. Do you feel like this could be the moment for them with this big merger that they're doing? No, I, I don't think they'll come into boxing. I think they might acquire somebody in boxing or work with somebody in boxing. But boxing so fragmented. I think to, to build it from scratch in the way they want to build it and they want to work in boxing, one, it would cost them too much money. And two, I don't think they'd have the patience for it. You know, I think what an organisation like that, an endeavour would be more likely to do is to bolt on that third division, which would make them unstoppable, you know, in terms of WWE, boxing, UFC. I mean, that's a real TKO business. Don't forget, TKO is technical knockout, which is also a boxing term. So I think it, at some point in the future you will see that, but I don't think it will be directly from Dana deciding to go into boxing personally. I think he'd find it very frustrating. Um, I think he's got obviously a fantastic business in UFC and, and a great model for success.